Hi, my name is Tony and I'm from the SUP company. Here we go, the updated 2023-24 Red Paddle Co ride range. So the 10.6 ride, why and where is it different? To the Red Podico 10.8 ride. Well, as it says on the tin, 10 foot 6 ride, 4.75 inches thick, it is 32 inches in width. Compared to the 10 foot 8, well, the 10 foot 8 is also 4.75 inches in thickness, but it is that width, and it's width at 34 inches that is probably the most standout and most important number and difference in these two boards. What does 34 inches of width get you over and above 32 that you get in a 10.6? Well, it's really stability at the end of the day. Stability uh, and additional volume that is gonna allow a larger rider or a paddler with say a small child on the front or two or three really that's gonna allow you to get on the water and get paddling and have a really stable board underfoot. If that's so great about 10.8, well, why is not everyone paddling a 10 foot 8 board at 34 inches in width? And that's because every board is a compromise. It's just where you're prepared to make those compromises. So the downside of a 34 inch width board is because it's so stable, some people enjoy a slightly more responsive ride as a result, and you'll get that on a narrower board. And the difference of two inches stepping down to this at 32, you do get that. The other main difference as well is tracking. So when you are paddling a paddleboard, ultimately what you're wanting to do is have the paddle as vertical as possible and as near the center line as possible of the board. And the center line is, as it says on the tin, running through the center of the board. The further away you paddle from that center line, as you would do on a wider board at 34 inches in width, well, you're gonna to start to induce a bigger turning moment. So trying to keep a 10-8 ride tracking straight and true is harder than it is on a 32 inch width board that we have on the 10.6. So a 10.6 ride will track better and feel a little bit more lively than a 10 foot eight. You can also take lively though to be less stable. Now 32 inch wide board is still really stable. You'll find boards out there from a wide range of brands around this width. And that really is testament to just how popular the 10.6 ride is, is that it's a bit of a trailblazer even still in this all round 10 foot six category. So if you are a larger rider or your family looking for the most stable option to be used by a really broad range of people, then 10 foot eight is a great option. If you tend to be a paddler going out on your own uh, or in a group and you're looking for a good all rounder that is made from premium quality materials, really high manufacturing standards, then a 10 foot six ride is the way to go. So let's take you through each of these boards really as we do in all of our videos from nose down to tail. And it's in the 2023, 2024 models from Red Paddle Co that we see, well, very little has changed to be honest with you. And I take comfort in that. I take comfort in that in that Red Paddle Co now are 12, 13 years old as a business. They know what they're doing. And the 10.6 ride and the 10.8 for that matter are so well proven and so well established. I imagine it's almost quite difficult for them as a company you can't step away from what's proven and ultimately proven to be such a success for them as a brand and that they've been able to go off and innovate from in different directions with their compact range or their longer touring models or their sport range. So to keep these boards at the core of the range makes perfect sense and change, not too much, is completely understandable. So we've got back returning, handle on the nose, nice touch, offers loads of uh, control and ease and ability to get the board in and out of the water. What's a nice touch as well that we've seen back again is the M6 mount fitting there. So if you want to fit, say, an action sports camera like a GoPro or something similar, you can do that there. There's heaps of aftermarket mounts as well from the likes of, say, uh, Railblazer um, that you can fit to the front of this board as well. Working our way back down though, we've got these proven bungee straps. I'm a big fan of these ever since they came out a few years ago. They're kind of a statement piece on the front of these boards. No one else does this. You can look at this board from afar and just in this three strap arrangement, you know that's a red paddle code board. 
We've got these nice stainless steel D-rings all the way around. A nice little feature that we have seen them just make a slight improvement over time is this additional D-ring in the center here. So it's easy to carry smaller items. So that whether that be some footwear stacked up, some flip-flops or a water bottle, it just slides under there and it keeps everything together really nicely. The main difference we see there in 2023 and 2024 over and above previous 10.6 rides and 10.8 rides is the deck pad. There's an aesthetic change to the deck pad. It's still in this classic kind of blue. They're quite conservative, but I really like it. It's simple, it stands out, it's a statement and it's a staple from Red Paddle Co in terms of what they offer. We still feature here this really nice embossed Red Paddle Co logo, and that runs beautifully across all the way across the deck pad uh, down towards the tail end, and it covers even more area in 23-24. The handle though in the center, do you know what? I really like it. It's the most generous handle on the market. They've tightened it up a little bit, so it's not quite as pronounced on the board, but it is still very filled with a foam filling. So to carry the board any distance is really easy. It fills the hand really well, and it's just very comfortable to carry. But the nice details in there, like this stitching from Red Paddle Co that runs all the way across there, just reminding us and alluding really to the quality of the overall board and package. The deck pad then runs all the way back down towards the tail of the board and it transitions towards this diamond cut finish that also has this embossed uh, red repeater graphic to the top of it. And it just, you can feel it underfoot slightly, helps you just orientate your footwork without the need to look down. So if you are starting to go and paddle your board in small waves, it's a nice little feature that helps you just work out where you are and not gonna run off the back of the board. There's an additional handle on the tail there as well with a D-ring where we'd also mount our coiled leash that is included in the package. Let's roll the board over though, up onto its rail. And you can see then the underside of the board. Very simple, very clean aesthetic. I do like this dark colorway though in the blue, so it just means that any scratches or light scuffs over the life of the board really aren't gonna show all that well. And then we run to the iFin system. The iFin system from Red Paddle Co is back. It's back with a vengeance in that it is a twin fin system. The fins are more rigid than they've had been before. Red have taken extra care as well with additional covers over the top of the fins there, just helping ensure that they remain on the board for the life of the board. They also actually, to my mind as well, tidy up the board as in, if you're looking at the underside of say a surfboard, you only see the fins where they join the board. Uh, I quite like the fact with this red skirt, or this uh, blue skirt rather, they put around the red fin. It just tidies that all up. It's a really nice touch. Uh, and both those fins are also towed in slightly. So when you are paddling this board in flat water, that is helping and aiding tracking as both of them are punching towards the center line of the board. The package though as a whole, I think is really worth noting the quality of the overall package that you get from Red Paddle Co because it does help justify that more premium price point that Red Paddle Co sit within. And it's the bag. One of the standout features that's so often overlooked as part of a package is the bag. If you think as to why you've got an inflatable sup in the very first place, well, it's transport, it's portability, it's the ability to take the board away with you, whether that be in a car or carrying it down to a beach, that's why people opt for inflatable paddle boards. And the bag from Red Paddle Co, well, it's fair to say it's the best bag on the market. It's the most generous and it's the easiest to access the board within. There's space within the bag for also your paddle to be dropped into, dedicated pockets for storage of fins and accessories and repair kits. But then with the ATB bag, it's the backpack system. So the backpack system isn't there just on the board bag. It can actually be removed its entirety. So when the board is rolled up and ready to be stored, you can almost have this light carry mode and remove the backpack system off of the bag and then just carry that, that backpack down to the beach with you, with the board, with the pump, and go in a very light fashion with limited luggage and makes it easy to carry. Conversely, if you're taking your Red Paddle Co ride on the plane with you, you can easily strip off the backpack system, tuck that in the main bag, and then there's nothing to get stuck in the belt as it winds its way back onto the plane or it's being offloaded, and it's really, really easy to deal with. 
The other thing I like about the bag as well, there's nothing too shouty about it. So if you are happening to use an airline that is uh, gonna charge you some extras, perhaps for sports equipment, well, it doesn't stand out as a sports equipment bag. And you can pretty much, not that I've ever done this, but you can pretty much squeeze it through as luggage on the normal belt and yeah, enjoy your holiday. But nice quality wheels as well from Red Pedal Co. So taking the board through the airport, easily done. The other thing within the package as well is the Red Pedal Co. Titan 2 pump. And the Titan 2 pump is, well, superb. Red, when they first introduced the Titan a number of years ago, it really kind of was a landmark feature within the ISUP industry, kind of broke the mold in that respect. Uh, and it served a really good purpose and it was a great pump for a long period of time. Red though, well, we've known the guys and girls there for a long period of time now. And yeah, they don't tend to do things by halves. So they went back to the drawing board and they pulled the entire thing apart. So much so that actually they ended up putting a lot of it away and then introducing and redesigning probably 90 plus percent of this pump, which we now have as the Titan II. We've got a separate video where we run through the Titan II entirely so you can understand the pros and cons to it. But just know that if you are only watching this video, well, this is the pump to get you on the water fastest and soonest out of any pump on the market. The other thing within all the ride boards, well, the paddles are included. And the paddle that you get with the rides is the uh, Tough Hybrid. The Tough Hybrid from Red Paddle Co. Really nice paddle, very lightweight, nice uh, nylon blade, which takes loads and loads of abuse, stands up to everyday use without issue. Nice aesthetic that leads through to the rest of the board and it ties the whole package together. But then we end up with a really smooth carbon handle, which I really like actually on these paddles, which is tied into the adjustable top section of the shaft. And it's just really comfortable underfoot, very smooth in hand. You do have the option of upgrading to the Prime Paddle, but we do have a separate video on all the paddles from Red Paddle Co. So if you wanna take a look at that and get some insight as to those differences, be sure to check out that video. So there we have it, the Red Paddle Co. Ride Range. If you're entering the world of stand-up paddleboarding for the first time, well, you certainly will be hearing of Red Paddle Co. And rightly so, they have a huge long-standing heritage within the sport and ultimately still innovate to this very day. The 10.6 ride will invariably be on your short list as well. And you'll also be considering a 10.8 ride. And for good reason, they are market leading boards that justify their price point and stand the test of time. And as you'll also see, really hold their residual value. Thanks for watching our video. If you've got any questions about what you've seen, why not give us a call in the shop or head over to thesubco.com. To stay up to date though with all of our videos, well, make sure you subscribe up here and hit the notification bell. But to see our next video, well, take a look up here.